Welcome, everybody, to the Adobe Fonts hey, show and Adobe's home for the holidays. Yes. Yes. It's good to have we you all. We are home. We are home. Uh, this is our festive holiday edition, as you can tell by our very fancy hats. Thank you very much. Um, yeah. I can't move or else my hat comes off. Yeah, it just it's just levitating there. Um, through the power of movie magic, it just stays there. So yeah, just basically don't move Ari and you'll be fine. So don't turn your head. Don't look at the screen too, too far away. Um, welcome everybody. Uh, we have a very Hi, special everyone. edition of the Adobe Fonts show for you today. We're gonna to be talking about practicing typography basics. And also we put together a little holiday gift guide with kind of tight nerd designery gifts possibilities. And I figure if you order something today, it might come in time for, for the holiday. So yes, that's exciting. And uh, yeah, we're going to get into it in a little bit. Let us know where you're from. I am uh, in Brooklyn. So yeah. Yeah. And I'm in the San Francisco Bay Area, California, Oakland. And we have a lot of people that joined already. It's very exciting. Annika. As always, so happy to have you with us. Indeed. And we have Oliver, Camille, Jan, or Jan, Liz, um, Liz, Mwendwa, Rich, Carol. Awesome. So exciting to see you all. Um, and I hope you're all in the spirit of the holidays. Indeed. We're definitely feeling it over here. Yeah, we are. Hmm. Tanya hanging out by East Coastal Georgia. Nice. Awesome. We have Kenya. We have UK. We have New York. Kingston. Tim I've Brown been to Kingston. is here. Oh, Tim Brown is here. That's a very, very special person we have in the chat. Yes. Excited. He's going to be here in more ways than one. I've been to both Kingston, New York, and I've also been to Nairobi. So you've been to Kenya. I have, yes. Wow, yes. that's cool. Texas, Massachusetts. In the house. Great. And if you happen to be watching us on YouTube, come over to behance.net slash live because then we can see your chat. Yes. And we can respond to you, or okay. if you have any questions, or fun comments we always want to see those yeah that's a good idea yeah so um for those of you that are haven't joined before i can introduce myself i'm ari i'm the library manager for adobe fonts and our team works with all the foundry partners that bring the fonts to you we're consistently adding fonts every month and um we're very happy to be here. And Ben? Yes, I'm Ben. I am a content producer for the Adobe Fonts team. And I do things like the stream and also help make other video content uh, and things like that, putting together, you know, just stuff to help basically make it so that you can get the most out of type when you're using Creative Cloud. So that's what I do most of the time and things like the stream. And uh, yeah, actually, that'll come into play later today when we talk about the, uh, the course that we're going to dive into. Um, we'll talk a little bit of a little bit more about that. And then if you're new to Adobe Fonts, Adobe Fonts is a library of over 20,000 fonts that you can use for both personal and commercial use. And uh, you get it all with your Creative Cloud subscription. So if you've never used Adobe Fonts before and you're not sure where to start, go to fonts.adobe.com slash recommendations, or just go to the homepage and you'll see all kinds of inspiring and cool images. And uh, you'll probably pretty quickly be like, I like that, I like that, I like that. And you can just start activating them and using them right away in your apps. So real easy. Yeah. And here on the Adobe Fonts show, we have great workshops and tutorials with our friends in the type world. And we love to see our audience, our fellow type lovers come together. If you like what you see in this show, please subscribe to the Adobe Live YouTube channel and you can catch all the replays of previous episodes you should also follow us on Behance. Yep. 
um, under Adobe Fonts, and then you can be notified for future episodes yeah. as well. And all the past episodes are linked from there as well. And a lot of the stuff we cover is very evergreen and is useful whenever you feel like diving in. So don't, it's not very, you know, it's not very news where, you know, it's not news of the time. It's like typography basics, type design, you know, logo design, things like that. So check it out when you get a chance. Yeah. And uh, okay, we've got a little bit of a poll today. That's a little bit of a, a different vibe, but it's a fun one. In the chat, tell us you're a type nerd without saying I'm a type nerd. So give us a little anecdote or a little quirk or a little something that lets us know that you're a type nerd. And uh, we'll go first. Ari, do you have a do you have a way to say that? Um, I don't buy any product with labels that I don't like. That is a good one. Annika said, I know this is degular, which is a good one also. <laughs> I was gonna, mine one Without was- Without knowing she's giving herself away. Yeah, if I go to a wine store and someone's not helping me, it is purely label that I'm gonna use to decide what to get. And if the type doesn't look good, it's, I'm not gonna buy that wine. It's just not gonna yeah happen. i just extend that to anything people are like oh this is the best olive oil and i'm like no i'm not <laughs> buying it yeah even if it tastes terrible i'm buying the one with a nice font on the label liz said that my partner won't buy wine that uses that you know on the label <laughs> oh my gosh you're you're totally limiting yourself yeah with that's wine. A, that is a lot so of wine <laughs> Yeah, it's a lot of wine out of the out of the running. That helps you choose it when does. you're in a store for sure. Narrow things down. Tanya says, I'm looking forward to the answers because I'm new to font and type. Ooh. Welcome, Tanya. Have you used Adobe the fonts. Adobe font service before? Yeah. Let us know yeah. what fonts you've been using or what you what you want to ask us. What you're interested in. Yeah. And I'll I'll say this. Uh, I made a gift guide of font related things. So I think that says it all right there. Yes. Yeah. You don't need to say more than that. Nope. That's it. <laughs> um, holy type fonts, Batman. Oh, and I there's, don't get that. Annika just posted the gift guide in the in the channel. If you want to take a look at that before we go through it on the stream, check that out. A bunch of fun stuff in there and a couple yeah. free things in there as well. So if you're looking for some just free fun things to mess around with or check out, there's a couple free things right at the top. So check those out. And I think let's uh, keep our, your answers coming. Tell us you're a type nerd without saying I'm a type nerd in the chat. We're going to dive into the topic. Um, I'm going to do a quick introduction here. So, okay. This last year, uh, Tim Brown, who's a colleague of mine and myself, helped the uh, Learn team put together an introductory typography course, and we and it's called Practicing Typography Basics. And Tim is the host, and so you'll see Tim in a second. And he's been talking about type for a very long time. Um, and I worked on this project, basically coming up with all of the assets that you see when there's examples of type and things out in the wild and pictures of things and book covers and billboards and all that stuff. I, I was the one kind of coming up with all that and like putting all that together. Um, so this is a really exciting thing. This just came out uh, earlier this month or I think late last month. And so you can, uh, there's exercises that come with it and also illustrator files so that you can practice along with us. So we're gonna watch the first video, which is gonna be like a broad introduction to typography and what it means. And then we're gonna go through this, the first exercise video, which will be about body text. So we'll watch both of those. Ari and I will probably add a few comments and a little bit of flair. But you don't have that. to exercise with your own body, right? No, no, sorry, okay. yes. Yeah, not body, not body text, but yeah, it'll, Tim will explain it. Um, when you said exercise video, I'm like, oh my gosh, are we gonna have to- Yeah, we're gonna, to... we're, gonna we're gonna dance, we're about to dance. That's basically what's about to happen. Um, all right, so let's dive in. We're gonna watch this first video and then yeah, if, or if you want to say anything during it or want to pause, we'll pause. Um, but otherwise, we'll watch this video. Sounds great. Yeah, let's dive into it. Let's I'm going to go. show you how professional designers use fonts so that when you use fonts, it'll look good. 
My name is Tim Brown and I'm head of typography here at Adobe. I've been making hey, websites and practicing typography for 20 years. I even wrote a book about it. Typography is how text looks and how text looks can totally change how it feels. Typography can seem trustworthy, exciting, official, casual, elegant, really, however you want it to seem. Typography can also make text feel appropriate and familiar, which can be like what you'd expect, or a little unexpected, which can be memorable. Typography is a vital part of how we talk to each other, how we learn, how we find our way, and how we decide which products and services to use every day. In this series, Typography Basics, we'll build a personal system, simple, repeatable exercises you can use to improve any project with typography, even if you're not a designer. The key is it will break typography down into jobs. Typography does all sorts of jobs. Calling our attention on storefronts and marketing messages, helping us read comfortably, helping us process and understand information, and lots more. Now that can be a little overwhelming when it's time to decide how you want something you're making to feel. So it helps to focus on parts of typography, to identify the job the text is doing in those parts and make decisions that help the text do that job well. And often a single project will have several pieces of text doing different jobs. That's normal, like a birthday invitation, for example. They might catch your attention with a, you know, a, a big piece of typography and then give you information or uh, an article that helps you read comfortably, but also scan for information. Websites and apps, they benefit from legible text and clear navigation. Typography is one of the most important skills you can develop to help yourself succeed and to create more impactful, authentic work. And it's a big topic. So let's get started. First, Sounds we'll look great. at text for reading. After that, we'll talk about getting people's attention. Then we'll cover guiding people through information. And finally, we'll consider how to evoke the right feeling for any project. And with this basic typography knowledge, you can improve whatever you're working on. Each section we'll go through focuses on an exercise that you can repeat again and again to build your skills. And it comes with an example project. So first I'll show you how to do it, and then you try. As you'll see throughout this series, typography is very straightforward. And we'll take it step by step. Tim seems like a really nice guy. Yeah, he does, doesn't he? I'm, I'm like, yeah, just tell me what to do. I'm, I'm, I'm in. Let's do this. Let's practice some type. I'm in. Just show me the way. Show me the way. Ben, are you wearing a cloud t-shirt? I am inspired by Tim's t-shirt in the video. I have my I Heart Clouds shirt on. Wow. So dedication right there. So much cloud cross pollination. Creative cloud, cloud shirt. I oh, love clouds. I forgot about the creative cloud. There's so oh, many, yeah. so many clouds, all the clouds. Um, so yeah, you you all saw that uh, the the series is broken down into four exercises or four videos describing a particular uh, job that text does, and then an exercise that you can do along with that and the exercise file. Um, those links can be found at the Pre Practicing Typography Basics course link, which Annika just posted in the chat. So if you want to check out those exercise files and follow along, you can do that right now. And yeah, we're going to dive into the first one, which is basically uh, text for reading and, and working with body text. Ari, do you want to say anything about the, the first intro video before we dive in? I think it was great. I loved all the examples that were shown. I know that you provided pictures of, you know, things you've seen mm -hmm. in real life. So all of those examples were really diverse and just showed how much impact typography choices can have. So great inspirational material. Yeah, that's actually a fun exercise too. Is like, look, just if you go around and you just look at, notice the type that's around you, you'll be like, Ooh, I like that. Ooh, I don't like that. Like when you go wine shopping, like that label, don't like that label, you know? All that yeah. Stuff. All right. We're going to dive into this first one and then we're going to go do the exercise right after that. So if you want to check out the exercise files, go to the practicing typography basics course page and go to the first lesson there 
It's called working with body text. Here we go. In this lesson, I'll explain how to make text easy to read and why it matters. Making text easy to read is about managing body text. That's all the smaller text you see when reading normally. Things like paragraphs and short sentences. Body text is really, really important. It's the majority of text that you want people to read. It's full of information and details that matter. If body text is hard to read, people will just skip it, or they'll feel really frustrated as they work hard to continue reading. You don't want them to feel that way. You want them to feel comfortable and engaged. You want people to focus on your message. So the job of body text is to kind of get out of the way and let people do that. Body text is subtle. It sets the tone for your entire experience, like the editing of a well-made film or the way furniture is arranged in a room. People say, that was a great movie, or this cafe is really nice. They don't know why exactly, but designers know the power of that subtle quality. And it's not just that, the decisions you make here, the measurements of your body text, they anchor the rest of your design. So your work goes more smoothly. And there are really only four main decisions you make about body text to get it to feel balanced. You choose a good font for body text, then you set the font size, choose a width, and decide on line spacing. When you make decisions about these four things carefully, that sets your whole design up for success. So that's what we're going to do now together. We're going to take a paragraph of body text and shape it by adjusting these four properties. The first thing we'll do is choose a good font for body text. You want something with sturdy shapes, even color, that's typographic color, the overall gray value and an active texture. Here are six good fonts for body text. And for now, we'll use Source Sans. The next thing we're going to do is set a font size. Don't stress about this. What we wanna shoot for is something that feels okay. So if you're not sure, just try choosing a font size that definitely feels too small, and then slowly bring the font size up until it starts to feel okay again. Or do it from the other direction, right? Make it so My big that you know hurt. it feels wrong. It's like way too big. And then slowly bring it back, make it a little smaller until it feels okay again. I like to call this technique, break it and fix it. It helps you figure out the limits of what feels okay to you. And as long as you're within those limits, you're good for this exercise. We really just wanna find a size that feels okay to us. The next thing we'll do is choose a width for the paragraph. This is also called measure or line length. And I like those words better because you might be working with rotated text or a language other than English, and width may not always be an accurate term. So we're just gonna do this the same way. We're gonna break it and fix it, right? Try to find a measure for this paragraph that feels okay. Right? Not too narrow, not too wide. Don't worry about the number of characters or words per line, just judge it by eye. Nice. All right. Now we have a good font for body text, a font size that feels okay, and a measure that feels okay. The last thing to look at is line spacing. Now sometimes that's called leading, which is a term that comes from the days of metal type when pieces of lead were put between lines of text to space them out. So we're going to adjust line spacing in the same way, just like we did before. We're gonna take it easy. We're so lucky play we around, don't need to touch lead. Break it and fix it. I know. To play around with Make our it spacing. so loose that you know it feels too loose and bring it back until it starts to feel okay again. Make it so tight that you know it's too tight. No. That's really too tight. So just let it breathe a little bit until it feels okay. And just oh. stop someplace. That's it. These are the four properties that professional designers use to achieve a balanced text block. Now you might not feel like where you ended up is very balanced, or maybe you're not sure. That's okay. You have to do this again and again to build your confidence. And you'll start to notice things. Like some fonts are bigger or smaller than others. So you'll need to use different font sizes to make them feel okay. You can't just swap one font in for another. Line spacing looks better tighter when the paragraph is narrow, right? And when the paragraph is wide, it looks better, a little more loose. 
That's because the bigger gaps help our eyes follow to the beginning of the next line. There's no magic formula for making text easy to read because so much depends on context. Book is very different from a billboard and both of those things can use body text. But by practicing these exercises, you'll develop your sense of balance so that when you're facing any project situation, you can make more meaningful choices. Use the project we've provided for this lesson and do this exercise at least three times with the same font. Then compare those three paragraphs and judge which one feels the most balanced. Hmm. Then you can mix things up and try different fonts. Cool. Awesome. So one thing you mentioned the lead and I just like imagine that you've laid out a page and you go, you know, I want the line spacing to be a little bit more breathe. I want oh, a little more breath. God. You have to replace the lead in every single one of those lines. Could you imagine? And now we just grab a slider and just go like this until it feels good. Uh, yeah, it's pretty amazing how far we've come. Indeed. And we need to appreciate how easy it is to set text properly and therefore do it well by doing some of these exercises and learning more because we have no excuse for badly set text given the tools we have yeah. and the ease of use of those tools. And practicing with them is so easy. Like to, to do the example that he just gave is lay out three paragraphs with different, different settings. If we did that manually with actual metal type, that would take us all day just to do one of these. And we could now do that exercise 40 times in a day and really feel like we're getting somewhere. So anyways, good stuff. Um, yeah. So with that, do you want to dive into the Yeah, so I went to out? the link that was also posted in the chat. So all of these videos are available here at this link. You can watch them as many times as you want. Mm -hmm. I know it's fun to watch with us, but I know that you might want to watch without me making comments so you can do that <laughs> and then each one of these videos has a practice hands-on tutorial so i'm going to open this in illustrator let's see is it going to make me sign in oh all right so it opens so in illustrator Oh, and it's that. really cool because it has this whole dialogue box that guides you through, which I had never seen before. I don't know if um, any of you have done tutorials like this before, but I thought it was super cool that you can just click start tutorial. Did you notice me up there at the top? I saw your picture. Yeah. yeah you're famous. I know. Um, and then I'm just going to make this see if I can make this a little bit bigger. Yeah. Eh, maybe it won't change the readability. Because as we know, if you make the lines too long, it's harder to read sometimes. I feel like the best readability of this is something like that. Yeah, that looks good. Um, okay, so it says our project has some fonts applied, which may not be installed on your computer. You can fix this. Um, so I think it'll bring up a missing fonts dialog box if some of these fonts are missing. I'm going to go next. Uh, okay, so choosing a body font. The first thing you'll do is make your body text look its best. First thing you'll do to make your body text look its best is to choose a suitable typeface. So I'm going to use my selection tool to select a box, text box in this artboard. Choose view zoom in. I already zoomed with my fingers. In the character section of the properties panel, click the font family menu to see all of the fonts installed on your computer. So this is the character section of the properties panel. And then I open this and I see all of the fonts that I have either on my computer or from Adobe fonts. So you can see with this little cloud icon that some of these have been activated through Adobe fonts. It's got that little if check they mark. haven't, 
Um, yeah, and it has a check mark. If they're not from Adobe Fonts, then they're installed on my computer either because I had them already, I bought them, or they're bundled within the Illustrator app or their system font on my computer. So all the fonts that you can use surface here. Okay, so it says what else? Click the filter fonts by classification icon. Whoa, that came up very high up. It was like, bing. Um, and click an icon to filter the font. We filtered by sans serif, which are pared down and lack details at their edges, making the text easy to read on screen and in print. So I'll click on sans serif to filter down and then pick a font from the list. We chose Source Sans Pro Regular. This font is highly readable and the font family contains additional styles to complement your body text. Okay. Um, how do I, I, I think that's, okay. that's, yeah, I think that's it. Um, I'll just leave it like that. So I filter down to sans serif and then I see what I have available. I can also filter by fonts from Adobe fonts. So I'll click that, the little cloud icon. Um, and then it only shows me fonts from Adobe fonts. And then I'm going to look through. So there, it's kind of obvious. Let me zoom in more. This thing, I don't know what I'm supposed to do with it, but it's in my way. Um, I think because my computer, I'm using my laptop screen. If I was using my larger screen. display, yeah. I could have both. Um, but we're going to figure it out. We're just going to move it around. So what was I saying? Oh, it's obvious that some fonts are not great for body text. So as we go through and choose one, you're going to see like, oh, I'm not sure. <laughs> That's yeah. Um, how about maybe Museo Sans? Myriad is a default font. We don't want to use that right we now. can get more adventurous than the default I think. yeah palago this is great for body text because it is a humanist sans which means that it's imbued with some elements that aren't just like mechanical it actually has some characteristics of a serif font and, and it has a lot of variation in the strokes and that kind of kind of shows you the hit like it shows you the original strokes that came from like when someone was doing calligraphy or, or actually yeah. writing with a pen, right? It has these human qualities to it. I actually really what like the look of that this? one. What about this? Transat text. How does that look? I think it looks good. Totally Pretty different readable. feel than the, than the other one. And then this is, uh, let's see if we can do, do I have source sans? I'll do source sans as well. Okay, so I did that. Practice applying different fonts to the remaining text block. I did it. Yes, next. Okay, now you'll choose the right size for your body copy. Click on the text frame and adjust the font size. Okay, so as Tim said, um, break and then what was it called? Breaking and fixing. So he said, like, start really small where you know it's too small. And then start making it bigger to see what size it should be. And this really depends on the application, too. Like, the if this is supposed to be a phone book where you need to fit 100 names on a page, yeah. Maybe it needs to be really small. And you would, and you would choose a not. you would choose a font that could work under that scenario. Yes. Too. Yeah. So this is 10 point 11 12. 12 is where it was. I feel like it looks good. Yeah, I think you could get away with 10 if you needed to, but I think the 12 looks nice to me.
And then this is transat text. And you can see, as mentioned in the video, that different fonts have different sizes. At 12 point, you'll notice that there are more lines on the last line. There are more characters on the last line than in the font above because yes. it's a different sized font. And and that's that's okay. You so let's keep that say you were creating, you're writing an article and the columns are really narrow. That makes a big difference because this font transat text, it could end up being an extra three lines if it's like a, a narrow column yeah. and that changes the layout of your whole thing. So it is really important to keep in mind that different fonts have different sizes and that's just because of the style of the font. It could have a higher X height, it could have wider characters and that just all adds to how big it is at a specific size. So if we were to make this a little bit smaller, um, I feel like if we add a little more line height to this one, mm -hmm. with this smaller size, it could work. I think it needs more breathing room, but that's coming up next. Okay, so then this is the Source Sans one. Let me know if anyone is commenting because I'm in this document and not looking at the chat. But let us know if you have any um, questions or comments about these choices. Tim Brown says, yeah, break it and fix it. Break it and fix it. Yeah. Yeah, we can try, you know, you can, it's really easy to notice when the line spacing is too close together. And then it's really, you kind of can get a sense of when it's too wide. And I think that I, I love that as a suggestion of like, take it too far in either direction. And then you start to get a sense of how, what looks right and what feels good to you. Yeah. So 12 point for Source Sans also looks good to me. Same. Again, depends on where you're putting this text. Okay, so we're gonna go next. Setting the paragraph width. The width of the text block is just as important as the font and size. Too narrow or wide and the text can be a challenging read. Um, so we're going to Oh, it says choose view fit all in window. Let's see what that does. Whoa. Didn't know that happened. Drag the text block onto the dashed box in the flyer design in the middle. Oh, see how I keep saying it depends what you're doing? Now we know what we're doing. Uh, Tanya asked what font that first humanist one was, and Tim responded Palago, and then Annika posted that link, Tanya. In, uh, in the chat. So if you want to check out Palago on Adobe Fonts, check out that link. Yeah. This is Palago. It's designed by Robert Slimbach. It's an Adobe original. Okay. So it says put it in the dash box and then make the box narrower, make it wider. So let's see. Um, it's pretty narrow, but we're going to break it and then fix it. Yeah, like that's clearly too narrow for that font size, right? We want more than five words per line, I think. Yes, and the edge on the right is called the rag. So when you see that it's very raggedy, um, it makes it hard to read. Yeah. And it's not very pleasing. And I remember when I was younger and I was basically only using Microsoft Word and everything was justified. Every paragraph I was like, justify, 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 because I had to have it straight on both sides. And then you would have these huge gaps 
in the in lines. Words, yeah, yeah. Does anyone have this experience? Yes. But at the time, I thought that that was good because it was pleasing looking at the whole page. I didn't even realize reading this is horrible because you're like, and then he went. <laughs> yeah, there's just a giant gap between letters. So having words. a rag on the right is totally fine. Um, but it's just making it seem less cleaner and, and less distracting crazy. maybe. Yeah. And yes. Tim says, remember that when you're practicing like this, there are no right or wrong answers. It's about spending time working with type, forming habits to improve your judgment over time. And I think that's a great point is that this yeah. isn't about doing this perfectly. It's about sitting with type, be becoming comfortable with it. You'll also find your favorite typefaces. You'll find your favorite fonts that you love using for these different jobs. So I just got so blurry. Oh yeah, your autofocus or something. <laughs> Come on, camera. You can do it. <laughs> can it what do I do? I don't know. Oh, oh, it's still not good. It's gonna Hello. Hello. Are you in there? <laughs> Come on, camera. Um it's just overwhelmed it, by it, the typography. Yeah, I can't believe how good this type is. It's lost its mind. <laughs> so I did this with Pelago. I'm also going to try it out with um, Transat text. See what happens. So I'm going to make this narrower. Okay. I feel like now that it's in here, it might need to get bigger. Yeah, I think so. Good call. Let's see. Let's break it. Break it and fix it. Okay. Needs to fit in the box. It's not fitting in the box. So I need to make it a little bit narrower. I'm thinking that looks pretty good. Maybe increase the line spacing just a little bit. We haven't even started with the line spacing. Oh my gosh, I'm jumping ahead. I'm uh, going to go next. <laughs> so we've adjusted the line length. And it says, you may notice some words are split and separated by a hyphen. Let's fix it so the words are unbroken. Oh, yeah, that does happen sometimes. So for example, nutrition here, plans. nutrition, um, with your text box selected, choose view, zoom in. In the paragraph section, click more options. Okay. Turn off the, oh, in the menu that opens, you'll see the selected hyphenation setting at the bottom. Oh, and it's in the paragraph section. I think you're in the character section. Oh, sorry. Oops. Hyphenate. Turn off the hyphenation setting. There should be no more hyphenated words. <gasps> wow. Ooh. Ooh. Now you can adjust the paragraph width so all lines look more even. Ah. Okay. That looks good to me. Um, I feel like we could actually get wider. That looks pretty good. Okay, next. Finally, you'll adjust the spacing between the lines. Yay! Hooray! We can't do it until Tim says it's okay. Yes. And Ben, because Ben made this tutorial. Yes. Um, okay. With the text block still selected, in the character section of the properties panel, character, uh, click the lighting menu. It's this, it's the two little A's that are one on top of the other and they have a little arrow. Showing the little space. Choose, uh, move the cursor over the sides in the menu to see the text in your document change. Is there a better way than clicking on this up and down button? Move the cursor over the sizes. Is there like some way of just moving your cursor? Um, I'm just gonna do this. Choose a value from the menu. Okay, so. 
That looks good. Let's make it really oh, yeah. Let's break spaced it. out. Yeah, that looks too much right now in this context. Yes, a little too much. So that's at 19. 18. We're getting there. 17. Looks pretty good. Yeah, let's break Might it in the be other direction. Perfect. 16. Break it in the other direction. Oh, yeah. Obviously okay, bad. So 19 and 12. It's somewhere between 19 and 12 for sure. <laughs> yes. So 13, 14, 15, I think 16 yeah. works because great. then also if we make it, let me move this over here. If we make it, whoops, hello, I'm trying to move you. Get out of here. If we make it smaller, that's also a really good trick. Like. When things are analog, you have to step back from them. But mm -hmm. on the computer, you can just zoom out. It's so easy. Um, when we zoom out, the color, I don't know if you all noticed, Tim mentioned the term, the color of the text, which means the general gray and white balance yeah. when you squint and look at the text. Um, this looks pretty good to me when we zoom out. It doesn't look too crowded when we do that. It doesn't look yeah. too squished. It looks, it looks good. And it looks pretty easy to read. The more I look at it, I feel like maybe it needs one more nudge. That looks fine to me too. What does everyone think? 16 or 17? Yes, it's about these fine details. These are the... This is where stuff gets yes. intense. Okay, so that's great. And if you wanna set the spacing value back to the default, you can choose auto from the letting menu. Where's auto? I think it's- Oh, there, yeah. right here. Then you just click auto. So their auto is 14.4. At this size. Ah, I see. And we went to 16, we went 17. 17. Yeah. Okay. Which I like. So. Cool. So uh, we're running out of time here. Oh, that's it. Perfect. We did it. Yes. Excellent. Okay. So... It, there's two examples too, so you can like compare different fonts when you're doing this, but you could just keep doing this. Um, and that second example is um, like a final example, you know, where you can kind of see what, what it looks like. Someone else did that. Someone made that final example and you can kind of use that as a, as a basis of, oh, that looks good. Yeah. Oh, I see. But you can also just mess around with it too. Go to town. Yeah, and you can change the font here under learn more. You can use this as a exercise to do a lot more things. Yeah. So it's really cool. Okay, so now that we did that, I think we can move on to showing our holiday gift guide. Yeah. Um, before I do so, I just wanted to show off a couple things that are new on our website right now and one of them is the holidays tag i know we were talking about our holiday mood and i just wanted everyone to know now that we're in the big swing of the holidays and people are creating cards and flyers and stuff you can use this to help you find fonts that would work well for a variety of use cases um, inviting people over to your house for a party, creating an invite. If you want to print out the stickers that you put on presents that say to and from, yes. you could use these fonts for those. Very good. Um, I will explain. I had a question from someone. Why is this font in the holiday um, tag? And it's because it looks like stitching. Um, it looks like, stitching. Yeah. It looks yeah, like embroidery. Someone asked me, they said, oh, why is this? Because 
what it actually, this font was created to look like is bricks stacked. So I think a lot of people see it as that and they don't envision like, I'm envisioning it white on a red sweater. Yep. And then it looks like stitching. Okay. So you can totally use that. Another thing that we just introduced today. Today. And I have my images off so that I can show this. Otherwise, world premiere right off. now. World premiere. We have new filters here on the left. So we have our properties. Everyone who's used our site and has looked at these has seen before. But there's two new ones. Can anyone see what's new today? Yeah. If you guess, you get a special shout out from us. Indeed. Um, I'll give you one, two, three seconds to guess. Okay. Italics. Yeah. If you were wondering, oh, does this font have italics? Do I have to click on the family? Now you don't have to. You just click on italics and it'll show you all 1,156 families that have italic. And it will show and you the, the italic. italic shows. Yeah, it shows you the italic in the example. Yes, so, so you don't have to click through and look through. And the best thing is that it also combines with the other filters. So if I wanna see serif italics, click serif, click italics. Serif italics that are a heavy weight. And the fonts so in the easy. family are more than 17 fonts. Easy. So easy. It's done. Okay. So that's one. The other one, let me just put that back, is double or single story A. So if you notice on the screen right now, we're seeing a lot of double story A's just because mm -hmm. we have serifs selected right now, I think. Yes. So serifs in general usually have double story A's except for their italics. Yep. I'm going to take off the filter. And then if I go to single story A, Look there we go. No more double story A's. So that helps a lot when narrowing down. I will say a lot of fonts have open type features, which we've shown a lot in this stream. I mean, in this show. And so there's a lot of situations where a font can have both a double and single story A if you go through the glyph panel in an app and it see an the alternate, alternate glyph. Yeah. yeah. But what we're using here is the default. So if a type designer has chosen an A as their default for this font, that is what we're showing in this filter. Just wanted to point that out. So this can also be combined with any other filters, sans serif A, Ooh, sans serif fonts See if there are any single serif story single stories. There are because, oh, sorry, I just clicked double. Serif single story. There are because italics are, are usually, usually using this form of A. Yeah. Um, but also something like base. And we're still populating this. So more and more fonts will be added to these as we go. Yes. Yeah. So we just launched it today. I'm literally going and clicking and assigning these two things. So please let us know if you use this. We heard a lot of questions from people like, why can't I filter by italics or stories? Um, so we're hoping that it's helpful. And now that we've shown that, I'm going to go on to the Adobe Fonts Holiday Gift Guide. So Ben put this together with a lot of input from people on our team or people from our community. And it's really cool. So first we have the free section. Yes. We have Type, type Wolf's, Wolf's Typography Cheat Sheet. That is free. If you want to get a little bit better at type, just put in your email here and you'll get a PDF. But you can also just scroll down and see Ooh, all of this stuff here. Really good this stuff. This is really useful stuff. <laughs> really useful. Once you learn some of this stuff, you can increase your capacity to get annoyed so much because yes, you're going to notice it'll bring so much most joy. people don't do the right thing yeah you're going to feel so superior <laughs> and so annoyed at everyone yeah when you read anything because you'll be like ah, they didn't use proper apostrophes they use quotation marks instead Ugh, Ugh. who are they who do they think they are so um and then resource. like with math like prime symbols like 
there's so many different types of characters that look like quotation marks that can get confused. Mm -hmm. This is awesome. Hyphens. Oh, people use the wrong hyphens all the time. I'm guilty of it because I love the M dash. I love a long thing. Me too. Like in between a long hyphen. So I'm like, oh, I'll just use this. It's like cooler, but it's not right. You no. can't use it all the time. No. Okay. So that is one option that's free. Mm -hmm. We also have textures. Yeah. These are kind of gritty printed paper textures. From Hutzpah. From Hutzpah. Good our stuff. friends over at Hutzpah Design. This, this is, is one really of their cool. This is one of their free ones. They also have a bunch of paid ones that are really cool too, worth looking at, but this one's free. Check it out. Ooh, and they have a tutorial. Yeah, on how to use them. Really fun. Perfect. This is a uh, glitch logo After Effects template that you can download. Ooh. It's free. And you can kind of glitch out your logo for a little, little intro to your whatever, whatever you're doing. Glitch out an image, whatever. Have fun. And then I put this in here too. We have font the Psychic packs. Psychic Waves font pack. So if you have Creative Cloud, go check out this font pack. Really fun fonts in here. Yeah. Great place to start. I put this to... I um, suggested the fonts for this based on them being kind of like ethereal or you could do cool things with the colors with them It too. also feels kind of 90s techno-y to me and... Yeah. Futuristic and spiritual all at the same time. It's cool. Okay. And then 25 and under, we have ampersand pin. Love it. That's a really cool one. And that's from one of our foundry partners, PS Type Lab. Yep. Mark Caneso. He has a lot of really cool merch. Bunch of cool stuff. We have there. the all types welcome hat, also from Mark Caneso. We have a thick and thin type specimen. Fun stocking stuffer like kind it, of thing. Yes. You know, and just a simple, pretty type, cheap. Yeah. For someone who likes to look at letters, pencil set, love these. Just good looking, vintage looking pencils. A digital workbook. That, also from PS Type Lab. He has so much stuff, so some, it's worth checking out. There's some great exercises in there, too, worth looking at. Um, Letterform Archive t-shirt. Yeah. Let us know in the chat. Have any of you been to the Letterform Archive before or I taken have. any of their virtual classes? Um, they have their Type West program that you can do virtually, and they have classes. They have lectures all the time that you can join. <coughs> Excuse me. I need some water. But they have these t-shirts, which is really cool. I love the design. I think we're coming up on just a few minutes left. Yes. So check out Keep the uh, gift guide. It's the, the list is in the chat too, if you want to check these out. Oh, this one's from Ono Type. Type friends and family. Good times. Nice. Yeah, good one. And if you... If you like this, Ono always has great merch that comes out periodically. So definitely check that out. We have this cool typography definitions poster. I love this. Yeah, it's great. Because it's useful, but also pretty. Specimen ornaments t-shirt from the Hamilton Wood Type Museum. That's a classy looking t-shirt right there. I love this. Yeah. That can be a gift for anybody. CMY Cube. This is a really popular graphic designer gift. Yes. And good stocking stuff for two if you get the smaller size or the regular size. Let the Good Times Roll t-shirt from Hellcat. Good vibes. There's so many cool graphic designing. Oh, Tetsu Suzuki calendar. This is amazing. Yeah, this is a he beautiful He makes a calendar. new calendar every year. And he is so amazingly inventive with the way he draws numbers. It's just mind blowing. So I would highly recommend, even if you don't buy this, look through and look at the previous ones he's done. Yeah, really cool. Great. All right. So definitely look at this. There's more that we don't have time to show, but some great curated options. Indeed. If you enjoyed this episode of the Adobe Fonts show, 
please follow us on behance.net slash Adobe Fonts. All the past episodes will be posted there. All future episodes will be announced there. And let us know if you get anything from the gift guide or if you got anything out of today's stream. Check out the uh, Practicing Typography Basics course. So much good information in there. We only went through the first exercise. There's three more yeah. to look at. And we'll do those probably in a future episode of the stream. And that aside, oh, also, if you have any, uh, any notes for Adobe Fonts, go to adobefonts.uservoice.com and give us some feedback. Let us know what you want to see from Adobe Fonts. That's how we got the feedback for the filters we introduced today. Indeed. And stay tuned for a full holiday week of exciting more streams for the holidays. I hope you have a great holiday, everyone. Ari, I hope you have an excellent holiday and a good new year. Thank we will you. see you next year uh, in, in January. So this is the last episode of the year. Thank you all so much for joining us. Yeah. Stay on Adobe Live. There's so much more, but we will see you next month. Yep. See you next time. Bye, everybody. Bye.